Greetings, this is Greg. I want to go over quickly how I set up the 45 PSI boost gauge in my 124 and also show you the water injection map that I used at the drag strip. That may be of some interest or helpful to some people. I want, before we get in the car, I'm going to point out this, this body line, which I like quite a bit. Notice how there's a line a curvature of the car that sort of kicks up at the door handle and continues on over the rear wheel. I heard from the designer of the original 124, which has the same exact body line, and he was not talking to me personally. I was in a room. He was addressing a group. But in any case, uh, he said the reason for that is that he had the design of the Pantera on his mind. He also designed the Pantera, and he felt that cars that are powerful or sporting should be kicked up like that at the rear quarter panel to resemble a feline's hindquarters when it's getting ready to pounce. So in the Pantera, of course, it's very dramatic. Um, it's supposed to be like a bigger cat, I guess, and I'm just interject interjecting my own opinion here. I think it's more subdued on this because it's like a smaller cat. But anyhow, that's, uh, that's why he said that the body line does that. Let's take a look really quickly at the 45 PSI gauge. Now, normally you just go with a 30 PSI gauge. If you're not using boost above 30 pounds, 45 PSI gauge is pointless. It's a little trickier to hook up, less accurate for some reasons I'll discuss, and uh, a little harder to read when you're driving because the scale is, is different. So let's take a look under the hood, and I think you'll be able to see see how I've hooked it up. It's fairly easy. Yeah, okay, there's enough light here. All right, so there's a boost sensor here, and it does not require any of its own wiring. It has uh, for power and ground. It connects to the wiring harness here, and that goes to the gauge. So there's a lot of other gauges on the market where you have to run separate wires for power and ground for that sensor, but here you don't. So uh, very easy to hook up electrically, and as far as the boost source goes, I'm tapping it into this EVAP line here. That used to be a hard plastic line. I cut it and slipped this eight millimeter silicone hose over the hard plastic line so I didn't have to remove these one-time use clamps. It's that way at the other end too, although you can't quite see it. So uh, two pieces of eight millimeter silicone, a T, and then a piece of four millimeter silicone, and we're done. This particular type of silicone grips very well, does not need clamps, doesn't leak under boost. A drawback to this configuration, however, is that that is not a great source of boost pressure. It will cause this gauge or any gauge to read one or two pounds low. Um, if you want 100% accuracy, the best thing to do is get the 30 PSI gauge that taps into the boost sensor here. I shouldn't say taps, it just plugs in. It's very easy to use. But if you have plans to go above 30, 30 PSI, um, then this is probably the best way to do it. I'm gonna pause the video take the car over to the shop, hook up the laptop, and show you the water injection map that's in the Vatrix machine here. Okay, we're back in my shop. I have connected here to the Vatrix box. It connects to the laptop. The ignition is on. If the ignition is not on, no bueno. You will not get uh, power to the computer. Therefore, no power to the Vatrix module. Now I'm going to open up this, which says Air Force One. It's an interesting name for software but that's what it is and it'll come up here when it says detecting device it actually is that's not just a uh, spinny thing that does nothing i like it it kind of looks like a turbine engine anyhow while it's powering up we'll take a look at the time slip at the time of this video so it could be totally different a week from now or even a day from now but at the time this is the fastest quarter mile any of these cars have ever run on gasoline as far as I know, uh, 14, 342, and 99.05 miles per hour. I think it's also the fastest one currently in existence. The only car to ever go faster that I know of was on E85 and much more highly modified and was uh, sadly destroyed in a uh, incident. In any case, uh, 14, 342 is fastest ever on gasoline. We also have the fastest ever time for an automatic 124, which I think is uh, interesting, and it's, it's stood for a long time. Okay, so the Vatrix software popped up, and we will take a look here. There are cells uh, in the horizontal axis. You can see RPM, 1,000 to 9,000. In the vertical axis is voltage, 0 to 4.71. 
the voltage in this particular map is uh, map sensor voltage. This particular one, OP1, which is highlighted in the bottom left corner, is for the uh, pressure sent in the boost pipe. OP2 is manifold pressure. The zeros mean that we're making no changes at all to boost. Um, and the, all of these numbers correspond to a boost level. For example, uh, 4.71 is around 29 pounds of boost. So uh, that'll be relevant later. Anyway, OP1 and OP2, we're making no changes to those. If we were going to make changes, we would have numbers in these cells at the point at which we wanted to make a change. Um, that's a discussion for another time, but you can uh, tune a completely stock vehicle up to a pretty good level of power uh, by doing this, and we'll, I'll talk about that another time. And I can't say definitively right now that I can add power to a ECU tune with this, but I'm, I think I can. I certainly have done it uh, in single gear pulls. I have not done it in a uh, completely done, ready for action tune that could be driven every day, but I have added a lot of power with this in, uh, in, in uh, non-definitive ways. So the main thing I'm using is water injection control at this time. And for that, there are two things we're interested in. SW1 down here, I will click it. And, oh, well, it's, it's showing all zeros. Okay, hold on. I forgot, I got to download. Right now, it's just where it doesn't know what's on the car. So I have to click this icon here. Click that, and it will download whatever's on the car uh, into the computer here so I can look at it. And, yeah, as I said, all zeros in... OP1 and OP2, because we're not making any changes to boost. Now, SW1, that stands for switch one, and it controls a solenoid. I suppose it could control anything you can think of that would be on or off, and there are two of them in this particular model. Normally, you would only have a version of this box with one, because I can't think of a lot of cases where you would need to, but they exist. All right, so switch one. Ones are on, meaning in this case, my water injection solenoid is open zeros are off. So as you can see, water, inje water injection never turns on below 2500 RPM and never turns on below, uh, well, 2.71 is where I have it most of the way across. And 2.71 is, I'm going to say it's about 12 pounds of boost. I'd have to look that up. But in any case, I, that's close enough for government work. So generally speaking, it's not going to open the solenoid below tw about 12 pounds of boost and below about 2,500 RPM. There is a case you can see there where at 2,500, a little bit below 12 pounds, it will open. That's because I want to make sure that solenoid is open uh, when the water pump kicks on. So I, I want to definitely get my spray. So that's, I think, easy to understand. Solenoid is either open or closed. Now, the next thing that we're concerned with is duty, and this controls the uh, percentage of time the pump runs. And again, you have two of them on this particular version. Normally you would only have one. Uh, I mean, th well, this box is available, but most people I think would not want the additional expense of being able to control two when one will do it. So here is the pump duty cycle. Uh, so you can see the pump never kicks on below 2.71 volts, which is about 12 PSI, and never kicks on below 2,500 RPM. When it does turn on at low RPM and relatively low boost levels, it will be at 35%. And if we were running the car, you would see the RPM kind of curve. It kind of curve that way uh, as boost and RPM both go up. It'll go to 37%, uh, then to 40. And those may sound like really small changes, and, and in a percentage term they are, but the actual output of the pump is not linear. There are some other factors that come into there. So that's a a bigger change than, than you might think. Uh, I have 100s at the bottom, and the reason for that is if something goes wrong, let's say, oh, this could never happen, but let's say I make a tuning mistake, uh, or a boost line comes off of the wastegate uh, solenoid, something like that, uh, if that was to happen, boost would could spike up dangerously high. Well, if boost spikes up dangerously high, or at least in this case, it goes to 29 pounds, the water injection pump goes to 100% spray, which is way more water than this motor needs and will absolutely quench any tendency to knock and uh, will cause a loss in power too, but it'll probably save the motor. That's about it for the water injection. Just know that there's a switch, duty cycle, and it's, it's pretty easy to adjust. In fact, you can go drive the car with this 
on and connected to the car. And as you go through the RPM range, it will leave this brown, see the brown cursor there? In fact, let me hit the trash can symbol to clear those out. And it reforms here because right now it sees this voltage and, you know, it sees below 2 volts and below 1,000 RPM. So this is the only square it can light up. The longer it's there, the darker it'll get. So as you go through the RPM range, you'll see a series of filled in squares. And this makes tuning with water injection very easy. Let's suppose that you've got a little bit too much water and when you drive the car, you feel it start to stumble. Well, you don't need to look at your gauges and figure out, oh, when did that happen? You just go to this map and go, okay, it was at 5,000 RPM. And you can see exactly what cell uh, the thing was looking at when it stumbled and you know exactly where to change it. That makes changing this map uh, at least in, in my view, relatively easy. And once you change it, of course, you can save it onto the uh, onto the module. So that's about it for water injection. Uh, this is a good map. It clearly does not bog down the car. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to get that uh, 14342 time. And uh, it provides plenty of protection. And, and I, it certainly doesn't add any power, but it enables you to have consistent power run after run. In fact, when I went to the track, I did three runs almost back to back, which is kind of a funny story in itself. I, I got there kind of early and it was cloudy and I think people thought it was going to rain. And so I was one of the first people to show up. In fact, I was the first one to go through tech inspection, hence car number one. And I did a few runs back to back. And then on one of the runs, I missed a shift and I thought, you know, I should probably sit down for a little while. And I went and got a hamburger and sat down. Well, the sun came out and by the time I got back out there, there were a jillion cars, but only one lane was prepped because the track people didn't anticipate that. And so um, at that point, I went home. But in any case, happy with the car. It went, uh, went fast, and it went fast three times in a row. And I think a big part of that is the water injection. Furthermore, I can use it to really crank the boost up, which I have done uh, at other times. And you'll see evidence of that another time. Anyhow, that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope everybody's having a good day.